Hi, everybody. Okay. I'm Steve Rauch. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Rapid Deploy. Uh, we're a cloud native solution provider in, uh, in the USA uh, for 911. Um, my uh, head of sales, the VP of sales, Jason Fuqua, is going to present the presentation on our solutions. But I can tell you that um, just a quick background of the company. We started out in South Africa in public safety, and we moved the business to America three years ago. And uh, we, um, the two products that we have in market that are doing very successfully at the moment are Radius and Eclipse, which is mapping and analytics. That's call take mapping, tactical 911 mapping, or if you'd call it um, in Colorado, and, uh, and analytics, which um, is CPE and, and PSAP analytics, which Jason's going to walk you through what those solutions do. Uh, this is uh, we understand completely this is not a sales pitch this is a, a learning exercise and introducing our company to and um, all the stakeholders so i just want to thank you uh, as the ceo of the business for having us on and daryl appreciate that personal invitation um on I'm on the call with me as well as our vp of product karen carlson who's got over 20 years of u.s public safety experience and karen if you want to introduce yourself Sure. Thanks, Steve. Hi, everyone. Um, as Steve mentioned, I'm Karen Carlson and uh, located in Green Bay, Wisconsin, um, where I have uh, 14 years in public sector, both as managing PSAPs um, and managing PSAP technology and standard operating practices. Um, additionally, I have uh, 13 years uh, in actually managing uh, the product, uh, product management and development of public safety software applications. So happy to be here. Thanks. Great, thank you. Um, and uh, just do a comms check on Jason. I know that um, he's been AWOL, but I think we've now got his. Yeah, can you, yeah, can you hear me, Steve? Okay. Great. Sorry about that. It was, uh, I could hear everyone, but no one could hear me. So maybe that was intentional. I don't know. Steve may have muted me. <laughs> It'll be the first time. All right, well, I'll, I'll stop talking and let Jason take over the presentation. We can't see your camera, Jason. I don't know if that's deliberate, but I'm going to switch mine off to not distract everybody. Yeah, I'm going to leave it off because I'm about to share my screen. Uh, before I start, let me actually uh, turn it on real quick and do a, a quick uh, quick introduction. So I, I heard Steve and Karen do an introduction, but uh, Jason Fuquay, VP of Sales for Rapid Deploy, uh, been with Rapid for right at three years now. Uh, started my journey with Steve uh, during that time, and and it's been a uh, quite the journey. And and I feel like we've really changed the the shape of public safety. I know today is not really a a sell spill, so I'm gonna you, there will be some talk of the products. And I heard I heard Steve mention those around uh, mapping and analytics, but I do have to touch on those a little bit just to kind of kind of show you what momentum we're seeing in the industry uh, from a state perspective, but also a local perspective. So um, I, will, I will keep it pretty generic as, pos as generic as possible, but if you do have uh, further questions, uh, I can handle them in this meeting or we can take them offline in another meeting. But uh, I appreciate the invite and I will share my screen and we'll get started. Does everyone see the industry briefing screen slide? Not yet, Jason. Not yet. There it is. Okay. So as, as I just mentioned, we're talking about, um, you know, the trends and things that we're seeing in the industry today. Um, from Rapid Deploy's perspective, we are seeing this in what we're calling our NG911 bundle. So the bundle is something that, that we've put together that is a collaboration between mapping and analytics, uh, not only providing the, the call taker in the PSAP with, you know, supplemental data, uh, situational awareness, uh, ways that they can use their, their map when the call comes in to help them you know, improve response times, help them provide that information out to the res first responder, uh, but also then have the ability to report on that. Um, you'll see throughout this presentation that either states, regional, regional efforts, or, or local efforts are using all this in, in different ways. Um, 
It could be that they are, you know, working as a, as a team to not only triage these calls, but then also report this data back to either hold the carrier accountable or to also, you know, have the ability to report that back up to the state. Um, as, as many of you know, a lot of the states are still doing uh, a manual type reporting effort uh, in, in our analytics package that still can be done. Uh, so the local, the local PSAP still has the ability to control that data, uh, but it, it streamlines the reporting process, either manual for them or just automatic backup to, to the state. Um, to kind of give you a little bit of insight, I mean, I, I just hit on both products there, but you know, the radius plus mapping is a single screen view to get that supplemental data. Um, I'll talk about a little bit of about our industry partners as well. Um, but what we see here, I'm sorry, this is probably not changing here. I'm seeing. There we go. Is it changing for you guys now? Yes. Okay. Um, so what we're seeing here it, on the left side is the, a, a screenshot of the radius plus mapping and on the right is the analytics, uh, Eclipse analytics. Um, you know, we're looking at it from a single uh, point of view for the call taker where they have everything they need, either, either the supplemental data that we, we delivered through our partnerships or, you know, other data with including like, you know, location. Um, we want them to see all of that in one single view, not have to go out to another portal or another login uh, to try to get that information. From the analytics standpoint, you know, we're looking again, the reporting effort, the, the PSAP efficiency reporting, um, reporting on demand. Uh, our analytics team would actually probably say, you know, more of, you know, predictive analytics and less of can reporting, even though that's, that's still, uh, you know, a big piece of the puzzle for analytics. So looking at, you know, looking at the perspective from those two products, we're looking at, again, combining those in a, at a bundle, we call that the NG91 bundle, but how does that benefit each stakeholder? So if we look at it from a gov governor or state 911 administrator standpoint, you're looking at, you know, obviously a statewide approach, you know, covering more of the territory, looking at unified data, uh, but also providing it the same level of public safety and, and uh, technology across the entire state, right? So consistency for all citizens, even, either a rural area or, you know, an agency that's highly funded. Um, it also gives you the ability to do some things that, you know, other products may not do in the fact that we not only want to provide location and supplemental data, but also give you the ability to reach out to that caller, right? Um, there used to be a commercial, you reach out and touch someone. I, I, I can't remember who it was from, but that's what I think about a lot of times when I'm thinking about the radius map uh, platform. It's not only to have the, the location accuracy to provide supplemental data, but how do you interact with that, that individual um, during the call or are there other ways to interact? Um, you know, and I'll, I'll hit on that kind of a little bit later on in, in the uh, in the slides, but you know, also looking at it from a CIO or techno technology leadership standpoint, you're modernizing modernizing your public safety infrastructure. Um, whether that's building in resiliency, uh, PSAP virtualization, but future proofing that for what it's going to be tomorrow. Uh, one of the the advantages of being a cloud based product is, you know having the ability to do those updates by basically a refresh of your browser. Uh, it's not taking you down. We're not, you know, you're on version four and another, you know, your neighbor next door is on version eight, but it's consistency across all users and that are on the platform. Um, you know, the, the other thing that, that I would say to here is, and, and again, I'll hit on the partnerships throughout, but I would say that at the end of the day, you know, looking at it at the state level, looking at it at the CIO level, um, I know we often, you know, we want to get back to what matters and that is at the PSAP leadership and at the telecommunicator position, right? Speeding up that response time, having more effective operations in your PSAP, whether that's, you know, location accuracy or that's driving decision-making off the data analytics portion, um, improving the misrouted calls. Um, I mentioned that earlier, you know, going back and holding carriers accountable for, you know, sectors that you continuously have misrouted call scenarios in. Um, 
Modern ease of use with the interface. Uh, I'm not going to go into a deep dive demo here today, but but if you you have seen our product or we have you know we work together on seeing the product, you'll see how user friendly it is. Um, it's it's almost we often say if you can use Google or Bing, you can you can use our products. Um, the ability to track mobile callers in mo motion, and then the ability to again reach out to the caller, whether it's you know multi language with SMS. Uh, two-way video, or then adding in advanced mapping tools or even leveraging your own state or local GIS. Going back to the scenario earlier, we had a client uh, in the Southeast that, you know, they had an outage, which we've seen many times at many PSAPs, uh, either from a local standpoint or a regional or state standpoint, but they had an outage and they were able to still see the calls based on our partnership with Apple and Google. So caller location and 10 digit, 10 digit number was still populating. And we've heard of these scenarios across the country. Um, our, our partnership is direct with Apple and Google. There's other platforms out there that also have a direct partnership with Apple and Google. But the, different to, the difference in, in that happens here is this very last slide where you see you know, two-way video, the advanced mapping, but also the ability to reach out to the caller. So in this scenario, you have an outage. Um, in that case, normally, once they have the caller's location they, that populates from Apple and Google, it's then up to the, the telecommunicator, telecommunicator to maybe reach out to that 10-digit line via another line that was stood up during the outage. In our platform with the multi-language or SMS texting, they immediately can text to the caller, and they did in this scenario and said, Hey, 911 is currently down. We see you've called. If it's a, a very, uh, you know, life-threatening emergency, you can use this other 10-digit number that we've recently stood up, or we can triage, triage the call via SMS, text through our Radius Map, uh, Radius Plus mapping. Um, this was during a very large event, a PGA Championship event, uh, and they ran 911 in four different counties uh, from about 10 a.m. that morning to about 8 p.m. that night. That ability to reach back out to the caller and interact with that caller, they ended up handling a number of their calls via the SMS instead of the, the call, um, is what I think goes the next step to just showing the location or handset location. So I wanted to look at some of the uh, trends or that some of the items that we're seeing from a statewide approach uh, when it comes to the bundle. So, here, you'll see on this slide here, we have a couple of states listed that we've done statewide deals with. So Cal OES, uh, Arizona uh, did the bundle. We just recently announced the state of North Carolina with our analytics package. Uh, Kansas is a, a big uh, proponent of rapid deploy and have, have used many of our products and are still champion of them today. And then we just recently announced the state of Tennessee for our mapping product. Um, in each of these, you'll see there's, there's a different reason or a different um, thing that, that kind of brought them into the rapid deploy perspective. Uh, from 911's, from Kansas perspective, it was more about, um, they have a very advanced GIS department. So it was about leveraging that statewide Esri base map, also creating you know, a single data set across all of their PSAPs statewide. And then integration done at the state level rather than the individual um, PSAP level. So it allows us for virtual deployments, easing, easing that process, not only from the state, from the local, but for ourselves as well. Um, in the Kansas scenario, you're talking over 100 PSAPs, uh, 1.7 million now one calls annually. Um, and, and again, they, they have been a great partner to work with. Um, their, their GIS team and the now one coordinating council with Kansas has just been um, an outstanding partner. Uh, we look to work with them uh, uh, for a long, long time. Jason, before you go past yeah. the slide, if you don't mind me just jumping in on the slide, just to sure. add a point of clarification on our deployment in Kansas. And Kansas is not alone in this, but certainly something to call out is that the Radius Plus map, which is you know, our web-based map. I'm actually going to switch my camera on for a second, guys. So just bear with me and show you something. Um, so firstly, you know, uh, the Radius Plus map is, uh, as I said, a, a web-based map, but it's not, a, it's not designed to be a supplemental map. We're not looking for this kind of swivel chair approach where you have to go and log into another portal, type a 10-digit number, come back and hope that you've had a hit. Our entire platform communicates directly with the CPE. 
We developed, developed a proprietary IoT platform called our Edge device, where we uh, frequently kill dinosaurs. And, um, and this allows us to take all these legacy Annie Alley spill, that legacy CDR, and actually ingest that straight into cloud. So you're not copy and pasting information across from your, you know, from the phone number from the CPE onto another web page somewhere. You're actually literally seeing that call pop in real time on the map. It is a primary call taking map. That's how it's used. It's also used in the entire um, region north of Dallas, the north central Texas region, uses Radius Plus as a primary call taking map. So the, the entire design of it is very different from just being a web page to collect info. This is designed to be the, your primary tool. Thanks, Thank sorry you. for the interruption. I, I expected it. <laughs> um, looking at, at the state of California, so you know the ability for, for them to um, you know, provide the mapping traffic, weather, the other capabilities, NG91 capabilities across all of their 440 PSAPs was, was key for them. Uh, also using the Eclipse Analytics uh, to, to look at the location of misrouted calls, location, wireless location, uh, hold it again, hold the, the carrier accountable um, and, and, and then trying to correct those problems. You know, we continuously have a misroute here. This is the data to back that up. How can we resolve that? Um, and then obviously added the text to 911 uh, language translation, especially during COVID um, and also as ability to, to inter communicate with domestic violence victims. Uh, we had all, uh, numerous scenarios during COVID where if you had a medical professional on staff, uh, some would use our rapid video to, to interact with that caller uh, to try to do a little bit of an assessment before they actually rolled, rolled on scene. Uh, the state of Arizona. So uh, obviously a, a big adopter, over 604 positions. Um, they wanted the same thing, consistency across the state, differing technology throughout the state, um, and then also, you know, providing analytics data from all their PSAPs, a manual or aut automated roll-up from the state to the, from the PSAP, and then leveraging that to make their, their next decisions on NG911 as they move forward as a, as a state. Um, they're now looking at rolling out um, you know, the statewide GIS and then other data elements as they continue to, to evolve uh, in the platform. So an overview of, of a few, and a couple of these are not on the slide because they're so recent. So recent, um, Like, for example, Kentucky. I know we had Tennessee up there. We didn't have Kentucky. But you can see the different products uh, that were purchased and then the problems that we were solving. I, know I just hit on most of them, but you can see here, Kentucky, we didn't hit on, but visualizing the supplemental location data, uh, including RAVE. Um, I'll hit on some partnerships here in a second, but you know the, the RAVE partnership, the OnStar partnership, I think those are just a few that uh, really differentiate us from a lot of other vendors. Um, and we feel like it's not, I mentioned this at the top, we feel like it's not just for a PSAP a 60 seat piece that, that has the funding to get this supplemental data, but we want it across the board. Uh, when I first joined Rapid, actually, Steve, I, I know one of our slogans, and I think it, it still is today, is democratizing public safety, right? So regardless of the size and funding of your piece that, you benefit from the same features, the same functionality as a, and same partnerships as a 60, 80, 100, 100 seat piece app. And I, to me, I think that's a huge differentiator between, um, you know, those who are in the market to, to drive by revenue and those who are in the market to improve public safety overall. Um, I've already mentioned uh, the RADIUS statewide as a tool for misrouted calls. Um, you know, obviously that can be done in, in many ways, but one way we see it from county to county is in a deployment, either regional deployment or statewide effort. Um, if, if both PSAPs, let's say on a different side of a boundary, are both running our Radius Plus product, you can actually see uh, a call was made in your area, in your 911 area or, or jurisdiction, and was, meant, was routed to your neighboring PSAP. It gives you the ability to see that call taker's number. It shows you that it was misrouted to your neighboring PSAP, and it gives you situational awareness in your current jurisdiction. I, you know, we don't want to get into the area of where, how we start to uh, navigate your workflows after that. I don't know if that would change your workflow, but it definitely provides you 
a situation awareness that you probably don't have in your jurisdiction today. It also gives you the ability to, um, you know, use that, that analytics or reporting tool because uh, we capture that in our Eclipse Analytics package to, to help improve those scenarios or hopefully negate them all together. When we talk about, I'm gonna transition a little bit from our radius uh, you know, product to the analytics product, but when we're talking about reporting versus analytics, I think this, this slide is a great slide to really show kind of legacy reporting platform versus, you know, I think what we're seeing in the industry today where it's more um, expected and also, uh, you know, more of a desire to see that how do we look at more a prescriptive or predictive analytics type scenario? It's one thing to have the same can report delivered every Tuesday to this administrator, but it's another thing to have you know, a predictive analytics of what we think may happen if, at this event that we hold every single year. And this is where we need to, to, you know, put the first responders in this area, or we need to focus our shift uh, load in this area. Um, how those, those are work in the PSAP and how those are managed and used to make, you know, decisions moving forward, we feel like is where the analytics program is going. You can see in the reporting section here, hindsight versus insight and then foresight. What we want our analytic, analytics package to do and what we feel like it's doing for customers today is providing them that, that full gamut there from what happened to how can we make it happen or what will happen moving in the future. Um, it's continuing to evolve and I think that you'll see some, some really cool functionality or features uh, in our analytics package throughout this upcoming year. Kind of, you know, what we just hit on as far as, you know, query your data and then plain language reporting, which I absolutely love. And it kind of blows everyone away uh, when we show this part of the, the demo. But, you know, being able to build your reports by saying, I want to see all the calls that happened on Tuesday that John took between, you know, 5 a.m. and 10 p.m. Um, in a bar graph. Uh, it's not building out a canned report but having the ability to just type it out in what, what really looks like a Google, Google search type bar um, for you to, to be able to interact with your reports, bookmark those reports, and then, make, and then have them delivered uh, as you would see fit to, who, to what stakeholders need to have that information. Uh, the ability to vi visualize these key state metrics. So we, we mentioned earlier, some of these statewide uh, rollouts of Eclipse have the ability to either keep the call taker or PSAP data at the local level or the ability to have it roll up to your um, to the state level, uh, whether that's annual reporting, biannual reporting, but it gives the, the, the state and the locality, you know, the ability to control their own data. Um, it's been, it's, I'll, I'll be honest with you, different states have a different approach on that. Uh, most seem to have it at the local and then give the ability for the locals to manually report up. But either way, we want our goal is to make it, you know, an easier process uh, on either side or either party. Maintaining established service level goals. So we also have a staffing module uh, in our analytics platform as well. This allows you to, you know, set different scenarios. So let's say, you know, you're ho hosting a big event, um, you guys in Colorado hosting the Winter Olympics, let's say, and you want to know what your staffing levels need to be at this time of the day based on this number of calls. Um, this this uh, module is based off of the NINA standard. And you know, I, I think that this one that we obviously see for a larger PSAP or a regional type set setting, um, but I think even a smaller piece app can find value add in this if, you know, especially if it's a statewide rollout and they're, they're already using the, the program or platform in other ways. Um, a kind of an overview of, of kind of what we've hit on, but from an analytics standpoint, you know, share the report, reports to multiple stakeholders, you know, easily understanding your staffing requirements for those scenarios, improving your training, interactive intuitive reports, with drill down and, and filtering capabilities. From a mapping standpoint, I would say unified GIS, you know, abandoned call workflow, misrouted call workflow, but also partnerships. Um, the list of partnerships continues to grow. Uh, we're seeing that across the industry, but I think we've really done a great job and, and led the way in that effort. Um, I know we've talked about OnStar 
uh, rave, but the list goes on and on of, of industry partners that we're working with and then outside the industry that we're, we're introducing to public safety or vice versa. States looking at it from a single source of truth, standards, standardizing their training effort, uh, reducing that workload, that reporting workload from an analytics perspective, and then streamline your funding requirements. So I know a lot of the funding requirements are based off of the PSAP reporting and we wanna make that, that easier. Um, I know at first, from a local standpoint, that could be sometimes a little bit scary, to be honest with you. They, they don't wanna feel like they're over-reporting. Uh, and oftentimes we see that, that we're able to help them maybe even report things that they, they were not able to capture previously. Uh, driving improvements of misrouted calls. I know we've, we've hit this a couple of times, but you know, managing at the state level, the PSAP level, and then also the, the call taker level. Steve already hit, already showed the, uh, the edge device and the ability to, to, to use that in your PSAP or, or at a state level. State level. Uh, we show here our pat patent there. Uh, that's been our pride and joy since day one. And I think it continues to drive or separate us from, from others in the industry as well. That was a really quick 30 minutes, but I will say I did take this, this demo usually takes about an, a little over an hour, but I took some of our, our demoing uh, parts of it out of it on the platform. Uh, but I'm happy to do that, you know, in, in another meeting or, or one-off meetings uh, with, with anyone that would request that or would like to have that. Steve, is there anything you'd like to add? Well, I mean, firstly, thank you for going through that. I think what's important here is just from an industry perspective and not from a rapid deploy perspective, but clearly, um, you know, in the last three or, three or four years, the industry has gone from cloud people are crazy to kind of demanding cloud native solutions, which is great for all of us, right? It's great for you, the practitioners, and it's great for the software innovators able to deliver with um, the best tools available. So I'm, for one, I'm really excited that the industry is really, I think in the last 18 months, pretty much wholesale decided that um, that they're ready for cloud, which is, you know, I think great. And then obviously the benefits of having these solutions as cloud native solutions, you, know, you can obviously see from our products and other products in the market that there's a definitely a benefit. But I think one of the key things that differentiates what, we, what we're trying to do, the problem that we're trying to solve for public safety isn't, oh, we just want to build a new Flugelbinder in the web as opposed to doing it, you know, installing your PC. The real challenge for the industry is how do you marry your, the legacy solutions, which we know, right, as part of this industry, it takes a long time for us to move from one solution to another. Change is hard, and we recognize that. So, uh, and the whole industry is not going to move to cloud native CPE tomorrow, right? The whole of Colorado is not going to move cloud native CPE tomorrow. So, well, what we've really tried to focus on is building fantastic tech, but then building that bridge that allows that tech to be useful without interrupting your workflow. Being able to marry the modern cloud native um, solutions with your traditional legacy environment that you're still, you know, you're still operating within. It doesn't limit you from moving to totally cloud native telephony either, but we have to figure out how to drive value to you, the user today. And I, th I think it's incredibly important that, right? Because we don't want to miss the fact Anyone can build a web page and say, look at my cool stuff on this web page, but unless it's actually useful and meaningful and you utilize it, it's not really delivering you value. And that is like something that's so important for this, uh, for this industry. And it's so important as, uh, for us as like solution providers to make sure that you, the practitioner, are getting the value that uh, on, you know, in reality that it looks like on paper, because those are stock when you think about how workflows are actually knitted together. I always say that public safety is a system of systems, right? So if we look at like the whole legacy model, how getting charged for every integration is totally bonkers, given the fact that every system is like a pile of, of integrations. So I think the industry has kind of, you know, moved away from that as their primary business model in the last few years, which is terrific for us. But the next step is making sure that every build can connect to whatever is currently there. Because otherwise, we're just creating more problems than we're solving. And just really from um, the analytics point of view, that chart, that's the first time I've seen Jason present that chart and showing the difference between reporting and analytics. 
I think that is really where the future is going, right? Um, everybody's got like these great data sets that are pretty much useless within public safety because they're all siloed. And um, the way we look at your data, and I'll say that quite carefully, in, in your data, not our data, and we, we never take ownership or look to monetize that. You know, there's this, uh, there's this joke you know, in, in, te in the technology circles that if, you, if you're not paying for the product, you're the product, right? So like, you know, on Facebook, they're selling your, your, faith, your eyeballs for advertising. So we um, very clearly, very early on decided we're going to charge for our solution. Our business model is that we, we're going to deliver you the best software, their solutions, and we're going to, our, our costs are upfront. So everyone knows where that's going. That's part one of it. Part two is how your data is used and how, again, to deliver that value to you, the industry. It's so important, like, you know, these statewide deals that we have and these regional deals and analytics, the crucial part here is that we have to deliver as much value to a single piece app as we do to the region or the state. Yeah. And that's key. And the way to do that is to protect you as a single piece app and your data rights, right? And who can see that, right? Can your neighbor see that? No. Can your, you know, can your state 901 director? It depends on the, the implementation that we put forward for whatever size implementation that is. But the point is, you can have the hierarchical systems of data and, and access. We had a very novel use case, and this is just interesting, just from you know, accessing who access your data, uh, accesses your data. Um, our platform, you can um, fine tune reporting access to a specific user group in a specific region, a specific piece app. So for example, one of our customers in California um, they get uh, um, bombarded all the time by detectives in the local police department who have to pull, you know, um, CDR reports um, out of um, out of the analytics solution because they, you know, doing investigations and need the the 911 um, call detail record and everything associated. So they just created a separate group that can only access that report within their PSAP. They never have to talk to detectives anymore. Detectives can run their own report, have their own access, limited and focused. And this is the whole thing is like where we can just you know, remove these additional workflows that are not your primary business and empower you so the data is meaningful. It's not just, you know, a table of numbers and you're staring at for hours. Okay. One, of the, one of the most interesting reports that we built was actually showing the um, angle of the faces of the network um, cell towers compared with misrouted calls over a period. And within like minutes, you can identify that angle on that cell tower. These change by 10 degrees to stop them, you know, 900 misroutes a month. We did that in, in Dallas. And that was just like a sensational project. But that report that we designed for them is now available, right, to all the customers. It's what Jason was saying, democratizes your innovation or innovation that came before you or come after you, you'll still benefit from a cloud native solution, which again, speaks to the entire industry, not just our product portfolio. So. Thank you guys very much for your time. Um, we're available for questions, or if you want us to go, we'll bid you adieu. Well, don't leave just yet. Um, okay. I have a question, but I want to see if anybody else does first. Anybody, um, if you have a question, go ahead. Oh, I see uh, Joe Benkert has his hand up. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, just generally with cloud solutions, how does that affect one local customization to meet the needs of the local PSAP and community? And two, what happens if you're um, if you get isolated, if a piece app gets cut off from the internet or other communications facilities, um, are they still able to operate with the data they need? Yeah, both great questions. So, um, so jo Joseph, the, the first part of your question is really about customization. And the way, and I can only speak for our company's design approach here, and I would imagine it'd be largely the same across industry because there's kind of, you know, the modern approach to uh, implementing software is quite different from the legacy approach because it becomes configuration or customization. So what you might see, you know, if you've seen one piece app, you've seen one piece app, right? That's how the saying goes, right? But there are many, many nuances which are transportable across the entire US and everyone thinks that they do it their own way, but that's all a, a flavor or a dialect of a common way that we've seen certainly. So we have um, the ability to feature flag 
um, components within our platform. So you know, we obviously, let's say we deliver um, a new set of features to a customer that's, oh, well, we don't want video turned on for our PSAPs because we don't have an SOP to support that. They can literally, the admin in that piece app can just switch off the video, just a toggle right in the admin section of the website. So that hopefully addresses your first question. Does that before I move on? Joseph, you're on mute if you have answered. Daryl, can you hear me? Just checking. Man. Yeah, yeah, okay. just move on. Okay. Okay, um, um, and the second point uh, you've asked is what, what happens if the internet goes down? That's the question. Am I correct there? Uh, the internet or uh, whatever facilities are used to communicate with the cloud. Right, okay. So um, with the cloud, one needs some kind of backhaul connection. Um, I can speak to um, a good example. This is what we did in California when we rolled out in California. So the backhaul for the device actually receiving your Annie Alley spill from your telephony system or the CDR spill, that goes to our edge device, which is this little IoT box. This obviously needs to talk to the internet. And what we did there is we deployed that with a cradle point modem with a first net SIM in that. And that was the kind of redundant backhaul. Um, you know, we can also connect within the, um, within the PSAP's existing wired backhaul as well. So you kind of have redundant pods of internet connectivity. And you know, that's the same when we're looking at what you're visualizing. Obviously, if you have a 9-on-1 outage, um, you're not, you're not going to be visualizing 9-on-1 calls, but we'll still, you know, if we have that internet connectivity established, we still have the ability to visualize the Apple and Google push signals that we get for your jurisdiction. So you're still seeing 9-on-1 uh, um, signals, even though you're not receiving CPE signals because there's a 9-on-1 outage. It, just to clarify what I think I just heard, in your California deployment, your access points have FirstNet SIM cards built into them as an automatic backup to wireless. Is that correct? Um, so, so they're, they're not my access points. That was yeah with our integrator who sold that solution. So we used Cradle Points in that scenario, and those Cradle Points had um, a FirstNet SIM, and in some and in some instances they had that dual SIMs, two different carriers. Put in those cradle points, um, and you know, Daryl, you know, Budge, you can speak with Budge on exactly how he kind of set up that network. And they also have a redundant line, I believe, a Comcast network, you know, running into every piece app as well. So they're making sure that they don't leverage the ESI net for the connectivity of the cloud based software that's operating within the piece app. They have a redundant second line that's actually feeding that um, to whatever software applications are running on the cloud making sure that it's not dragging down the, the, the efficacy of the ESINET. Joe, did you have another question? So I, I don't know if that gets around our problem of, of um, PSAPs in areas which don't have, <clears throat> excuse me, diverse network paths. And, um, you know, I, I don't, know if there are independent paths for internet into those areas. Do you have know about that any more than I do, uh, Daryl? Well, diversity of, of um, options for internet connections is going to vary across the state. Obviously, in the rural areas, there's less connectivity to be used as alternate paths. Um, but I do know that, and, and I've also not related to rapid deploy at all, but I know that, um, for instance, in Kansas, uh, with their EziNet deployment, they've also used FirstNet uh, SIM cards as backup to their EziNet. So that's something that a lot of states are looking at and, and uh, are actively exploring in some cases. Yeah, and I see we've got um, Tracy <laughs> Murdoch here from the FirstNet Authority on you as well. Maybe they have some more insights as well. You know, and I'll, and I'll say, you know, one of the considerations, especially in our rural areas, is that the same backhaul that's being used to provide local internet is also the backhaul that might be utilized for wireless connectivity. So if you lose that backhaul, you might lose both, um, in which case your SIM card isn't helping you very much. 
Um, this is one of the things we'll have to keep in mind when we explore these types of concepts. Yeah, I mean, I would um, I would always advocate for um, multiple lines of ingress, right? I think that's super important. Um, as we think about even the way the telephone company has changed, right? The telephone company is not selling telephone calls anymore. It's, uh, it's a data company. And if we think about the new generation of software applications, those are running on the data pipe. So if you're thinking of, you know, redundant um, uh, you know, paths of ingress for your CPE, which traditionally was a, you know, a voice line. And as your CPE migrates into ESINet, an IP-based solution, again, you have redundant paths. should be no different for your software applications, making sure that you have that redundancy built in. Yeah, in a, in a perfect world, Daryl, we deploy actually two edge devices connected to two different internet sources pass in a perfect scenario, right? Yeah. And we do that specifically where, uh, where our scope work says we are we will be this, the primary call taking map. We actually you know we provision in an active active environment, so the, the, we have redundant. Even if this device fails, we have a backup device running hot. If a line fails, we have a redundant path. So that's how we provision to make sure that you know when we say mission critical, we believe it, right? So we actually we build to that standard. Thank you. Joe, did you have another question? Uh, no, I don't. I'll figure out how to take that down. I'll lower your hand for you. There you go. Anybody else have a question? So my question, and Steve, you, you touched on it a little bit. You talked about um, you know using connections off of the EZNet because you don't want the CPE to um, drag down traffic on the EZNet. Um, are there deployments that you've done that do use EZNet connections where the EZNet has perhaps been um, scaled to the to accommodate the use of CPE over a cloud solution using the EZNet? I'd, I'd say that we're, we're in conversations right now with a couple that have got uh, either brand new um, EZNet or um, are in the process of procuring one and trying to, trying to spec that. I think what's interesting is... Um, you know, uh, California is kind of ahead of the curve on a lot of the uh, um, a lot of the next gen implementation. I think everyone's kind of waiting to see how that will play out and the amount of bandwidth. You know, the the next wave of telephony will consume on the Azure Net as well, right? Because um, we never want to interfere with the voice path. That has to be given preference above everything else. Else, so knowing that, I think we got we be very cautious the way we certainly as Rapid Deploy would not recommend um, running any applications that aren't um, you know spec to be on the ESI net um, without really solid testing and understanding and seeing production environments for months if not years because again I never want to be the system that you know, choked up the traffic uh, to deliver sure. voice. So one of the things we talked about recently here in Colorado at our uh, we recently had a workshop and one of the things that was brought up was the the possibility of prioritizing traffic on the EZI net so that if you did have cloud-based solutions also running on the EZI net, you could um, deprioritize them so that they don't have any impact on the ability to deliver voice calls. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that approach, whether that would be a more comfortable approach to providing cloud solutions over the EZI. I mean, that sounds uh, that problems. sounds ingenious, Daryl. To be fair, I mean, that's uh, I, I'm not technical enough to give it a, a you know a technical response. I just, as you say, it sounds like first net for EZI net, right? So priority and preemption running across EZI net sounds like a really really good idea. Um, I'd love to get my rocket scientists on that with whichever um, working group, if it's Nina, you know, to discuss that further and see if uh, there's some some merit there, but. That would be a, a great solution, meaning you're investing once in your infrastructure and getting, you know, du um, double the, the benefit um, and you can throttle it accordingly to make sure your primary uh, doesn't ever get into uh, in interfered with, with um, your secondary application. So, Thank you. And the reason why I'm pushing this so much is um, I, I absolutely agree with you. There should be multiple connections wherever possible. There are areas of our state where the EZNet is probably going to be the most reliable thing that they could get data through. Local internet connections are not going to be as reliable as the EZNet in some parts of our state. Um, so, you know, having the ability to deploy something like this over the EZNet is something that we might want to be looking at in the future. Yeah, 
Yeah. And uh, I see an old friend uh, on the chat there. So, firstly, hi, Bruce. <laughs> Good to see your name. I can't see you on the screen. So I'm assuming we've got a couple of pages of people on this call. But uh, Bruce, is that on an ESI net or is that your just traditional uh, LAN network that you've got prioritization running there? Bruce says traditional network that we lease. Um, the suggestion uh, that the ESI net might be capable of being configured for prioritization of traffic um, actually came from our, um, our incumbent 911 service provider at that uh, workshop that we had recently. So just so you have an idea of where that idea came from. Okay, okay. well. Although, although you could probably say that they might have stolen that from FirstNet, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, uh, I don't have a dog in the fight. I just, great to see innovation coming from everywhere. Happy to see it. Absolutely. Anybody else have any questions? This is Carl. We did recently go live with our analytics, and so far we're very happy at these that we use. All right, Carl, good to see you on the call. And Carl, Thank you've been you, using the CPE for a while, haven't you? No, we just went live a little bit ago. It took a while to get through the contract and stuff, but once all that was worked out, it was actually fairly quick. Good. Any other questions or comments? Well, Steve, uh, Jason, and Karen, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. We'd really appreciate it. Um, for everyone who's on the call, if you joined late, this, meet, this call was recorded. Um, we'll be posting it to the task force YouTube page. And um, if you have any questions that you come up with later, uh, feel free to send them to me and I will pass them on to the, the team at Rapid Deploy. Right. Well, thank you very much for having us once again. And uh, honored to join another session if you'd like us to come back. I'm more than happy to. And That's excellent. I'd love to visit. Perfect skiing weather. I need an excuse to come out. <laughs> That's right. All right. Thanks, bye, everybody. everybody. Yes. Thanks, bye. bye. Thanks.